Hi there, welcome to tutorial one, which will be on algorithms that come up in the Edexcel Decision 1 maths course. Now, this material is also applicable to most other decision modules at A level. Just a reminder, for more help with any of your math studies, um, see my YouTube channel at Hegarty Maths or MrHegartyMaths.com. Okay, let's start straight away with what Edexcel wants us to know about algorithms. So this is straight from the Edexcel specification and we are told we need to know the following about algorithms. Now today we're just going to talk about the general idea of algorithms and the implementation of an algorithm by a flowchart or text. All the other points here I'm going to cover off in future videos, so none of these we're going to touch on today. There will be videos in each of these topics afterwards. Okay, so let's start straight away with what is an algorithm. Have a think to yourself whether you know what that word means, and I'll play a clip from you from the Big Bang Theory of Sheldon trying to use an algorithm to make friends. So take a look. I believe I've isolated the algorithm for making friends. Sheldon, there is no algorithm for making friends. Well, well, hear him out. If he's really onto something, we could open a booth at Comic Con, make a fortune. <laughs> See, my initial approach to Kripke had the same deficiencies as those that plagued Stu the Cockatoo when he was new at the zoo. <laughs> Stu the Cockatoo? Yes. He's new at the zoo. <laughs> It's a terrific book. I've distilled its essence into a simple flow chart that will guide me through the process. Have you thought about putting him in a crate while you're out of the apartment? <laughs> Hello, Kripke. Yeah, Sheldon Cooper here. It occurred to me that you hadn't returned any of my calls because I hadn't offered any concrete suggestions for pursuing our friendship. Yeah, perhaps the two of us might share a meal together. Yeah, I see. Well, then perhaps you'd have time for a hot beverage. <laughs> Popular choices include tea, coffee, cocoa. I see. No, 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 wait, don't hang up yet. But what about a recreational activity? I bet we share some common interests. You tell me an interest of yours. You, really? On actual horses? <laughs> tell me another interest of yours. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I have no desire to get in the water till I absolutely have to. <laughs> Another interest of yours. Uh oh, he's stuck in an infinite loop. I can fix it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It's interesting, but isn't ventriloquism by definition a solo activity? <laughs> yeah. Wait, tell me another interest of yours. Hmm. Is there any chance you like monkeys? <laughs> yeah, what is wrong with you? Everybody likes monkeys. <laughs> Hang on, Kripke. A loop counter and an escape to the least objectionable activity. Howard, that's brilliant. I'm surprised you saw that. <laughs> Gee, why can't Sheldon make friends? <laughs> All right, Kripke, that last interest strikes me as the least objectionable, and I would like to propose that we do that together. Tomorrow. Yes, I'll pay. <laughs> All right, goodbye. All right. Time to learn rock climbing. <laughs> so, it's an interesting clip there about an algorithm. Um, Sheldon was trying to use an algorithm to make friends. Um, a couple of things to note from the clip, just what an algorithm is. It, it's, a, it, it's some instructions that can solve a problem for you. His problem was finding friends, so he wrote an algorithm to try and help him find friends. Okay. The key thing about an algorithm in maths is the following key points. It is precise. Sheldon's algorithm on the board was very precise. It's well defined. That means it's got um, set inputs and it's got known outputs. It's well defined. You know what's going to come out at the end of your algorithm. And a key thing is it must be finite. Now in that clip it said that there was a problem with Sheldon's algorithm and he ended up in an infinite loop where an answer wasn't going to come. So it's important that your algorithm is a finite, so it will find an answer in a finite amount of time. So an algorithm is precise, well-defined and finite, and it's a set of ordered instructions which, when followed, solve a problem for you. So that's what an algorithm is to start with. You need to know the definition of an algorithm and the key points about it. 
Now, next thing, what's the point of an algorithm? Why would you use one? Uh, why not just solve problems by ad hoc methods? So I'll, uh, I'll show out to you what the difference between an algorithm and using ad hoc methods. Ad hoc is just trial and error, trying and see if you can solve a problem without any sort of instructions for you. Now imagine a Rubik's Cube. If you were just trying at random to solve it using your own brain, you might find it very difficult. You may end up getting the right answer, you may be clever and you can do that, but if you had an algorithm, you could step by step find the solution to the Rubik's Cube, okay? So, you could be guaranteed an answer to solving the Rubik's Cube. Whereas if you were just trying using your own methods, you can't guarantee you'll get there in the end. But an algorithm guarantees us an answer. Now, the algorithm may, be, may end up being longer than we could have done it just by tri trial and error, or it may be quicker. So you, can't, you don't know if it will be faster necessarily, but it will guarantee you an answer. If you were trying to solve a Rubik's Cube, and you had a set of instructions, and that could mean you could solve the Rubik's Cube. But you wouldn't know why the instructions work, what you're doing at each stage and the relevance of it, yet you still are able to solve the problem. So that's a really important thing about algorithms. An algorithm can enable someone or something, which we'll talk about in a second, to solve a problem when they have no idea what they're doing or the reasoning behind the, the steps they're taking. So that's quite useful. And why that's useful is that you can use an algorithm to program a computer to do the calculations for you. Now a computer doesn't understand what it's doing but it has massive um, calculatory powers so once you've programmed it to do something for you it can do it very quickly and it doesn't have a clue what it's doing or why it's doing it. So that's really important about algorithms. Algorithms are the link between mathematical language and computer programming. Okay next Let's uh, talk about, there are two ways that we have to know how to write an algorithm. The first way of writing an algorithm is just writing a set of instructions, rather like a recipe, okay, telling someone what to do in what order with a set of words, and that's the easiest way. The next way is by use of a flowchart, like we saw in the video clip of Sheldon's friendship algorithm. It's something you can follow the flows of to make the correct decision at each stage during your algorithms. Okay, so I'm going to show you uh, examples of each, uh, written instructions and the flowchart, and you need to know to be, how to be able to do both of these. Okay, first one, algorithm as a list of instructions. Let's uh, have a go at this algorithm here. This is an algorithm we all know, and I'll show you what it means at the end, but you should be able to see pretty easily. You've got some numbers, and step one is to arrange the numbers in ascending order. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to list my numbers that I started with. So they were 12, 2, 3, 8, 2, and 4. And step 1, I'm just going to call S1, you arrange them in ascending order. So the 2 is the smallest, there's another 2, there's a 3, a 4, an 8, and a 12. And I've done step 1. Then for step two, you delete the end numbers. So I'm just left with two, three, four, and eight. Step three, I repeat step two until I only have two numbers left. So I would have one number or two numbers left. So I would have three or four left over once I delete these two. And step four, the median is the one number left or the mean of the other two. The mean of three and four is simply 3.5. And this was an algorithm to find the median of a list of numbers, okay? And it's a common one we've seen at GCSE. So you put the numbers in order, you delete n numbers, you keep deleting till you have one number or two numbers left. If you've got one, that's the median. If you've got two, work out the average of those, and that's your median. So there's a simple case of an algorithm. Let's take a look at another one slightly harder, and um, it's using what's called a trace table. Sometimes we need to uh, keep track of the various inputs we're putting into our algorithm at each stage, and a trace table allows us to do this pretty easily. Okay, so we're going to implement the following algorithm. It says, let n be 1, a is 1, b is 1, write down a, a and b, let c be this, write down c, 
let n be this, etc., and go on to n is 5. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to write down the key things we need to know in this algorithm. So we're going to write, we need to know n. We need to know a, we need to know b, um, we've got c going on here, and let's just, uh, that's all we need for now. So, step one. You write n is 1, a is 1, and b is 1, and you're done. There's nothing for c. Step two, we're going to write down a and b. So this, I'm going to actually write a write-down column, a write column. Okay, so a and b are 1 and 1. Okay, step three. Let c equals a plus b. So c must be 2, because a plus b is 2. Okay, write down uh, c for step four. So we would just write down 2. Okay, step 5, you let n be n plus 1. That means you let n be one number bigger than it already was. So it was 1, now make it 2. Okay, let a be b, so a will now be 1, and let b be c. C will now be 2. Okay, and that's all of that step done. Now step 6 if n is less than 5, go back to step 3. So here, n is 2, so go back to step 3. So go to step 3, I'm going to write, and we're going to write back what step 3 is. Now step 3, let c equals a plus b, a plus b would be 3. So let c be that, then step 4 would be write down uh, c, and c would then be 3. Okay. Then let n be one more for step five. So let n now this time be three, and uh, you're you're done there. Let a equals b and b equals c. So let a now be two. Let b be three. And step six says if n is less than five, go back to step three. So go to step three. Okay, and we're going to have to keep doing this until n is five. So I'm just going to keep doing this. Go back to step three. Step 3 says let a equals let c equals a plus b, so let c be 2 plus 3, which is 5. Step 4 then says write down that, so put that in the write down column. Next step, let n be 4, um, and swap a and b, so a should be now 3, and b should be 5. Um, and step 6, uh, go back to, go to step 3 again, because n is only 4. So go back to step three, and then you've simply got um, let a equal let c equals a plus b. So let c be eight. Step four, write down c. So write down eight. Step five, let n be five. Let a uh, be what b was, and let b be what c was. So a would therefore be uh, five, and c and b would therefore be eight, um, and then. It says, step six says, if n is less than five, go to step three. So you haven't done anything. Step seven, stop, because n is five. So stop there. Okay, and what does this algorithm do for us? What are the things we've written down? Let's take a look. One, one, two, three, five, eight. Let's write that down. One, one, two, three, five, and eight. They have produced for us the Fibonacci numbers, the first six Fibonacci numbers. And if we kept going with this sequence and let n be 10 or whatever, then they would produce for us um, more of the Fibonacci sequence. So that's uh, another example using a trace table there. It's important you write every step down, that you can't step any, uh, skip anything. You have to write every step, go back to steps when they tell you to, and always write a write-down column or an output column for the things they want you to write down. Okay, good. Now, let's move on to an algorithm as a flowchart, the second way we can write an algorithm. A couple of bits of terminology and pictures you need to know. Whenever you see ovals, that's telling you a start, a stop, or an input and output data. When you see rectangles, that's telling you to do a calculation or an instruction. And diamonds are questions which help you determine what way you go in the flowchart. If you ever see let m equals 5 or let n equals m plus 1, we've already seen that in the last uh, example, that just means replace m by 5 in that case, or in this case, replace n by a number that's one bigger than it. 
So that's all we need to know about flowcharts. Let's have a go at doing a question with a flowchart. This is a, a very common algorithm that we all know. This flowchart can be used to find roots of the equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Okay, it's effectively using the quadratic formula to solve um, quadratic equations. Okay, so it tells us we start off, we input a, b, and c, we let d be this thing, we then say is d less than zero. If it is, there are no real roots, and we print that as the answer. If it's not, if d equals zero, then we print the roots minus b over 2a, and they are equal roots. And if d is bigger than zero, there are two roots given by the quadratic formula, which you then print. Okay, let's apply this algorithm to uh, a question. Here, let's try and do it with this quadratic equation, 7x squared minus 6x minus 10 equals 0. So I'm going to start off by um, working through this, and it says, first of all, input a, b, and c. Now, I'm going to do this as a table. I'm going to go downwards. It doesn't matter if you go across or down. I'm going down because I've got less space. So I'm going to write A, B, and C. A is 7, B is negative 6, and C is negative 10. Okay, we've done that. Go down. Let D be B squared minus 4AC. If you work out uh, minus 6 squared minus 4 times 7 times minus 10, you get the answer, 316. Okay, then we're going to get a question. Is D less than zero? Okay, the answer is no. So I'm going to write no. Then we go down. Is D equal zero? Well, the answer is no. Okay, um, and therefore, we've got what X1 and X2 should be. X1 is therefore negative B minus, uh, sorry, X1 is negative B plus the square root of D over 2A. So it's equal to 6 plus the square root of 316 all over 2a, which would be 14. And x2 would be uh, 6 minus the square root of 316 over 14. And at that point, we'd stop and we'd print the root. So we'd write down that is one root and that is the other. So that's root 1 and that's root 2. And it's as simple as that. Now, you could have drawn your table across. Um, I just did it down because I, I had run out of space. So you could have just as easily drawn it across, but I did it like this, just for ease, okay? Right, and that's as simple as it. That is following an algorithm and writing down your results uh, from the algorithm as a flowchart in some sort of table. Okay, um, just to finish off with then, I'd like to suggest some work for you to do to consolidate what we've talked about in this tutorial. Um, all this work suggested is from the Decision 1 Ed Excel book as shown above. I think you should read uh, chapter 1, pages 1 to 9, and work through examples 1, 3, 4, and 6 so you understand the other examples. You should do exercise A, question 2, 3, and 4, and exercise 1B, question 1A, 3, and 4. The last thing I suggest you do, after you do all that, you move on to my next video, which will be the past paper questions video, and you can find those on Hegarty Maths on YouTube. Um, they'll look something like this. They will be the past paper questions that have come up in regards to algorithms and the topic we've talked about today. Okay, back to homework. Make sure you do that homework to solidify everything we've talked about. Thank you for watching the video today. I hope you found it useful in your studies.